Today's episode is going to be all about vision and eyesight. And then we are going to get right into some protocols, some specific things that each and all of you should do if you want to enhance your vision and maintain your vision as you get older. Here's the first protocol. If you are not viewing the sun, sunlight, even through cloud cover for two to 10 minutes in the early part of the day when the sun is still low in the sky and doing the same thing again in the evening, you are severely disrupting your sleep rhythms, your mood, your hormones, your metabolism, your pain threshold, and many other factors, including your ability to learn and remember information. The most central and important aspect of our biology, and perhaps our psychology as well, is to anchor ourselves in time, to know when we exist. What does this mean for a protocol? It means get that light in your eyes early in the day and anytime you want to be awake. So try and get as much sunlight in your eyes during the day as you safely can. If you can't see sunlight because it's the thick cloud cover of, say, you're in the UK and it's winter, then artificial lights, especially blue lights, would be very beneficial to you. Now, here's another reason to do this, and I've never spoken about this before on any podcast, which is that there have been several studies now in thousands of subjects exploring what can be done to prevent myopia, nearsightedness, and other visual defects. And the conclusion has emerged that getting two hours a day of outdoor time without sunglasses, even if you're reading other things and doing other things outside, has a significant effect on reducing the probability that you will get myopia, nearsightedness. And no artificial blue light will not replace this aspect of your visual system and offsetting myopia. It is not healthy to only look at things up close. You need to go to a window. You need to look out at a distance. Ideally, you would even open the window because those windows actually filter out a lot of the blue light that you want during the daytime, a lot of the sunlight. It's actually 50 times less gets through. You want to get out onto a balcony. You want to relax your eyes and look out at the horizon. You want to go into what's called panoramic vision and let your vision expand. You want to get outside to maintain the health of your visual system. In other words, you want to exercise these muscles and that involves both the lens moving and getting kind of thicker and relaxing that lens. And the relaxation of the lens is actually one of the best things you can do for the musculature of the inner eye. So what's the protocol? How often should you do this? You might be surprised, but for every 30 minutes of focused work, you probably want to look up every once in a while and just try and relax your face and eye muscles, including your jaw muscles, because all these things are closely linked in the brainstem and allow your eyes to go into so-called panoramic vision where you're just not really focusing on anything and then refocus on your work. You ideally would have at least 20, probably more like 30 minutes of being outside ideally, but if you can't be outside, of non-up-close vision. You might say, that's impossible. How am I supposed to do that? I'm in an office or I'm in a building. Get to a window, get outside if you can do it safely, get onto a balcony and just let your eyes relax. Many people are experiencing severe vision problems because they're not getting enough sunlight during the day. They're have sleep problems because they're not viewing sunlight early in the day and they're getting a lot of artificial stimulation, artificial light stimulation of the eye in the middle of the night. All of this is through the visual system. So migraines, fatigue, challenges with your eyesight getting worse as you age or even in young people can largely be dealt with by getting outside, going into panoramic vision, experiencing some distanced vision, look at things off in the horizon. If you're walking or hiking or biking, not looking at your phone the whole time that you're doing that. If you're at the bus stop or you're uh, commuting, certainly not not looking at your phone the entire time you're doing that. So this is vital. And I want to emphasize another protocol. Getting into optic flow is very important for de-stressing your system. When you move through space, whether or not it's through walking, biking, even swimming, if it's self-generated optic flow, so probably not driving or motorcycling, but yes, bicycling, as long as it's self-generated optic flow, meaning you're generating motion of your body and the visual images around you are passing by on your eyes, that is very good for the visual system. And it's very good good for the mood systems and the neuromodulator systems of the brain and body that regulate mood. This is well established. I want to mention another study that was done by the University of Pennsylvania. They have a terrific group that works on sleep that made an important discovery that I think everybody should know about, which is that children that sleep in rooms that have a nightlight or dim lights are much more likely to develop myopia, nearsightedness. Conversely, children that sleep in very dark rooms, so either very dim nightlights or complete black, They have a much lower, statistically speaking, a significantly lower probability of developing myopia, nearsightedness. Now, why is that? It's because the wavelengths of light that matter for these melanopsin cells oftentimes can get through the eyelids. Many people have thin eyelids and those people are going to be even more prone to light coming in through the eyelid. So for parents, for kids, and for adults, you really want to try to get to a place where you can sleep in a completely black or dark environment. Now, our visual system is extremely 
exquisitely tuned to motion, not just our self-generated motion, but the motion of things around us. And one of the things that it does is something called smooth pursuit. Smooth pursuit is our ability to track individual objects moving, as the name suggests, smoothly through space in various trajectories. You can actually train or improve your vision by looking at smooth pursuit stimuli. And that sounds really boring. What you can do is you can actually take a few minutes each day, or maybe if you don't do it each day, you could do every third day or so, and actually just visually track a ball. Sometimes it's moving in in kind of an infinity symbol. Sometimes it's more of a sawtooth. Sometimes it's changing speed. Sometimes the cue that you're following, the little target is dilating and contracting. This is going to keep the muscles, I want to be clear, this is going to keep the extraocular muscles conditioned and strong and allow you to have a healthy, smooth pursuit system. I would say five to 10 minutes, three times a week will be great. If you care about your vision, you can train your vision in this way. The other one is to train accommodation. There are a lot of videos out there, I want to be clear, on the internet talking about things you can do to make your vision better, to improve your vision. Most of those are geared toward improving the extraocular eye muscles. But I did consult with our chair of ophthalmology at Stanford School of Medicine about what sorts of things, tools are actually beneficial for pattern vision and sight. And he agreed that a smooth pursuit stimulus, that kind of training, as well as near far. So spending a few minutes, you might even just do this for two minutes of looking at something up close, that's going to activate these accommodation mechanisms and then moving it at arm's length and focusing on it for five, 10 seconds, maybe more, maybe uh, 15 or 20 seconds, then slowly moving it into a location and then out. So what does this mean? The tool is spend two to three minutes doing smooth pursuit. There's some programs on YouTube. You could do this with a pen if you wanted. (laughs) You could do this. uh, Someone else could hold a wand and you could do that uh, if you've got someone that can do that for you. Practice accommodation for a few minutes, maybe every other day. Just bring something in close. You'll feel the strain of your eyes doing that. I can feel it right now. Move it out. You'll feel a relaxation point. Move it past that relaxation point where you will have to do what's called a virgin side movement to maintain focus on that location as it moves out. Bring it back in. It's worth doing. It's really worth preserving your vision. And again, if you're a young person, this is great because then you can actually build an extra strong visual system using all the tools that we're describing. I do want to talk about a new set of findings that are related to red light and offsetting age-related macular degeneration. There are a lot of ways in which our visual system gets worse over time, but one is so-called age-related macular degeneration. Flashing red light into the eyes early in the day, not late in the day, early in the day can help offset some age-related macular degeneration, presumably by enhancing the mitochondrial function in the photoreceptors. Doing just a couple minutes a day, like two minutes a day of flashing this red light into one eye and then the other, as long as it was early in the day before noontime, and as long as it was in individuals that were 40 years or older, did seem to have a significant effect in offsetting some of the age-related macular degeneration that would otherwise occur. Some people suffer from poor eyesight simply because their eyes get dry. There are incredible, believe it or not, lubricating mechanisms for the eye, not just tears, but thin sheet of oil. The lubrication of the cornea is supported by blinking. And while it seems a little silly, some people actually benefit from doing, you know, some, you know, five or 10 or 15 seconds of blinking and then doing their focused work. Some people, their eyes are drying out because as we focus, if we're trying to do something, our eyelids stay open, the eyes can dry out. Blinking for five to 15 seconds, probably slowly, not as quickly as I'm doing here on video, but just, you know, maybe a blink every second or two for 15 seconds can lubricate the eyes. And that's um, not directly related to anything neural. It's just going to allow the optics of your eye to be clear. So now you understand a lot about the biology of vision. You understand that light has to arrive at the retina and get converted into electrical signals. That process requires things like vitamin A, a fat soluble vitamin. It requires things like the carotenoids. That metabolic cascade, that biochemical cascade is essential for vision. And this is why you've been told that carrots help you see better because they're high in vitamin A. There are a few simple things you can do to support your vision. First of all, it is true that eating vegetables, the dark leafy vegetables and things like carrots that have vitamin A in abundance and eating them in close to their raw form. So naturally occurring foods that contain a lot of vitamin A in their raw form can help support vision. There's a lot of excitement nowadays about supplementation to help support the health of the visual system. But I want to talk about a molecule that's in a lot of supplements to support vision. And there are some really good data on, and that's lutein. What is this lutein stuff? Well, lutein is in the pathway that relates to vitamin A and the formation of the opsin, the photopigment that captures light in the back of your eye, literally absorbs light and converts that into electrical signals and allows you to see. And there is some evidence through quality peer-reviewed studies that supplementing with lutein can help offset some of the detrimental effects of age 
age-related macular degeneration, but only for individuals with moderate to severe macular degeneration.